Hi friends, hello, hi, how are you? I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Hello, hi. So today, first of all, candle of the day, can you see? Champagne wasted, forever mood. And today's video, oh my god, this is gonna be a good one. Um, so I, I had this idea a while back, and I don't know if you guys are going to like it, but this is the maybe this is me. Every like few months or years or however, I get into this random mood where I just love to learn about like random crazy stuff that happened on the internet before I was on it, while I was on it, like whatever it is. I just love to look into like what happened. Um, relive it almost. And one of my favorite creators who does videos doing essentially deep dives into the internet is named Sarah Zed here on YouTube. I adore her content, her channel, her as a person. And I recently stumbled upon a video she did about DashCon, which was a Tumblr convention, and I won't get into the mess that it was, but boy was that video incredibly interesting. And that video actually got me thinking about a con. <laughs> quite literally, that happened three years ago, almost to the day that I am posting this video. And that con is obviously TanaCon. I thought it would be fun to just really go through like what actually happened that day, what went wrong, spoiler alert, not a lot went right. Um, and also because Michael Weist, who was a big part in this whole TanaCon debacle, uh, recently went on the Dr. Phil show to kind of talk about his side of the story, I thought it could be kind of interesting <laughs> to discuss like the after effect of TanaCon, especially because it was three years ago. So if you're interested, keep watching. Also, today's video is sponsored, so let's roll to that. Today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. We talk about HelloFresh all the time on this channel, and that's because it is amazing. Today we were making some delicious chowder. Charles kind of took the lead on this one because I've been so busy, but that's one of my favorite parts about HelloFresh. It's super quick and easy to do. This one took about 10 minutes of prep and then 40 minutes on the stove and it was done. HelloFresh is super flexible and fit our lifestyle. Like for example, this week, we knew that we were gonna be running around and super busy. So we were able to pick meals that would be super quick and easy to do. HelloFresh really focuses on sustainability with completely recyclable packaging and also is committed to giving back. They have donated over 4 million meals to charity in 2020 and have continued donating amidst the coronavirus pandemic, which I think is fantastic. Charles and I absolutely love HelloFresh. We do it every week, even not with the sponsorship. Like this is something that we pay for regularly because it's so good. Uh, so we would highly recommend giving it a try and trying it out. If you're interested, you can go to HelloFresh.com and use code Smoky Glow 14 uh, to get 14 free meals. That's Smoky Glow 14 and get free shipping. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and keeping us very well fed even when life gets a little hectic. And let's jump into the video. So on April 2nd, 2018, if she had been one day earlier, it all could have been just a big joke. Uh, Tana Mojo posted a video titled Why I Won't Be Attending VidCon 2018 a rant. In this video, Tana basically detailed her experience the past two years at VidCon. She talked about her 2016 experience and her 2017 experience. Tana discussed how she was mistreated by sort of the higher ups at VidCon and how they basically just like wouldn't make her a featured creator. You have no idea what VidCon is. It's basically an event where a bunch of creators go every year and their whole premise is this opportunity for fans to meet their favorite creators. Now this is obviously not a video about VidCon. But I think it started off with good intentions. I think it started off with you know people just all kind of hanging out with other youtubers and because it started before youtubers started becoming more mainstream celebrities and had like millions of followers the first few vidcons were definitely very low-key and chill but by 2016 when tana first went to vidcon it was a completely different story tana talked about how in 2016 people at vidcon had told her she was going to be a featured creator but then when the lineup came out she was not a featured creator tana still decided to go and was on a few panels but because she had over a million subscribers at the time she was pretty quickly mobbed while being there and basically caused a safety hazard. Tana was kicked out of VidCon by some of the CEOs and while I think her sort of telling of the story is a little over dramatized, like she basically says that the CEO of VidCon told her she was like a horrible 
awful person. I do think that this video brought to light, especially her 2016 experience, brought to light that if a creator has over a million subscribers or has a really large fan base and they are being featured on panels, if you don't want to make them like a featured creator, they at the very least for their panels should get access to safely move about the premises so they don't cause these gigantic mobs. Anna talked about how VidCon had been her dream her entire life and how having this horrible experience at VidCon really hurt her. But then in 2017, she was in Joey Graceffa's YouTube Red Show called Escape the Night. Escape the Night was a massive part of 2017 VidCon. They had posters of the cast basically plastered on the side of this gigantic building. The whole event was essentially centered around Escape the Night, like they were going to do a viewing of the very first episode. They had these escape rooms that you could do with the cast of Escape the Night. It was a huge deal. And Tana, yet again, in 2017, was denied being a featured creator, despite the fact that everybody else in the cast was a featured creator. And again, they had signed her up for all of these panels and events and things that she was supposed to be doing. There was essentially no safe way for Tana to fulfill her obligations as a character and cast member of Escape the Night, and also meet VidCon's rules of like not causing a mob. This caused more problems with VidCon and Tana, and essentially she described employees and security guards being rough with her and also being incredibly rude to her. But in 2017, for the end of the weekend, she was allowed to be a featured creator so she could finish out all of her sort of obligations to them. That is essentially the gist of Tana's problem with VidCon. They kept telling her she was going to be a featured creator, allowed her to promote the event as if she was a featured creator, and then basically just didn't make her one. Now I'm not gonna lie, even re-watching Tana's telling of events, despite the fact that they obviously are really dramatic, <laughs> like some of them are not real. Like some of the details are not real. Despite all of that, her criticism of VidCon and her sort of anger towards them is legitimate and like incredibly legitimate. And it also makes a lot of sense why she would be angry. She was essentially put in a position where she was unable to win. And I can get why that would piss her off. After all of the drama that happened in 2017, Tana was essentially promised by VidCon that 2018 would be her year. She would be a featured creator. There'd be no issues. And then the 2018 lineup came out and Tana was once again, not a featured creator which set her off on this video. I will say, I think it's very shady that VidCon allowed her to sort of promote the event and allowed her to tweet about it to her fans if she was going so that they would buy tickets in the hopes of meeting her. However, I actually don't necessarily blame VidCon, especially in 2016, for not wanting her to be a featured creator. When you're a featured creator, you're essentially representing YouTube as a platform and you're also representing VidCon. So I can understand why, especially in 2016, when Tana Mojo was in a ton of racist scandals, they did not want to be associated with her and they did not want her as a face of their event. With that being said, they should have just had no communication with her. Like they should have not booked her for panels. She shouldn't have been allowed to go, all of that. At the end of this video, Tana basically said that she was thinking about and toying around the idea of the weekend of VidCon, which was June 22nd and 23rd, having a sort of meet and greet where she and other creators maybe weren't deemed acceptable or good enough by VidCon could go and do this meet and greet in the same town as VidCon, which is Anaheim, California. The event would be free and she could meet all of her fans and it would essentially be what she wished VidCon had been as a creator. I think Tana fully said this like as a joke. I do not think, and she's even said, I don't think anybody thought when she posted that video that she was actually going to do this event. Like, I don't think that was her intention in saying that. I think maybe she would have done like a meet and greet with just her to be like petty, but I don't think an event was what was on her mind when she talked about that. However, this video got, first of all, just so many views. Like so many people were talking about it. Everybody was talking about how unfair it was. It brought a bunch of other creators out of the woodwork who had felt really wronged by VidCon, people like Logan Paul, who in 2016 actually started a massive mob at the VidCon convention center and was almost tackled by a security guard. It basically brought this sort of new energy about VidCon in general and how it's kind of an outdated system. Paying $200 for an event to maybe possibly get a meet and greet with one of your favorite creators was like kind of silly. The event had essentially become very corporate and because it was so corporate and because it was so organized, honestly, it had lost a little bit of that sort of charm that I think people were looking for. Because Tana got all of this support, I think that in her head, she decided it might be fun 
to do this event, to like really do TanaCon. She like had a lot of people hyping her up, a lot of people saying that they would go to this meet and greet if she were to put it on. According to the timeline that both Tana and Michael Weist, who is the CEO of Good Times Live, came out with, uh, this is when Michael Weist approached her and essentially said, I can do TanaCon. Now, Good Times Live was a really small company. Like they had put on a couple of meet and greets that were very small scale. We're talking about like hundreds of attendees versus thousands that they were planning for this event. They'd never planned a convention. They'd never done anything like that. But they had worked with Tana a few months prior doing a meet and greet and everything had gone really well. So there was already that built in connection between Michael Weist and Tana. So towards the end of April and into May of 2018, Tana started selling safety hazard merch, which was basically a joke at VidCon because like her whole thing was they kept calling her a safety hazard. And it was this like neon hoodies, whatever. She um, started selling this merch and I think that was low key to test the waters because I don't think according to either of their timelines that they had actually started like really planning the event yet. So we are at the beginning of May and the event <laughs> happened in late June. So we're less than two months out from the event and nothing has even really started to be planned yet. They just have merch to test the waters. Tana talked about in videos at the time how this merch was some of her best selling merch ever and how people were really down to like support her and ride for her. And so then in late May of 2018, Tana tweeted out a link to go buy tickets to TanaCon. She also tweeted out a lineup. This lineup included people like Bella Thorne, Elijah Daniel, Ricky Dillon, Emma Chamberlain, Chris Clemens, Casey Neistat, and most importantly, this lineup included Shane Dawson. Now, I think it's really important to just like pause here and talk about the importance of Shane Dawson being at this event. Initially, he was listed as a surprise guest, but a couple of weeks after the lineup came out, he confirmed that he was one of the secret surprise guests and that he was going to TanaCon. The reason that this was such a big deal was because in the height of 2018, Shane Dawson was arguably one of the biggest and most relevant content creators on the platform. He was posting videos that were getting tens of millions of views and was getting this sort of mainstream recognition that not a lot of creators had. In Michael Weiss' documentary that he later released about this, there's a clip from Jordan Warona, who was Tana Mojo's manager at the time, talking about how he was really unsure about the event. And then once Shane tweeted that he was going, he literally was like, well, I think everything's gonna work out now. <laughs> because Shane Dawson was going. Shane Dawson added a level of legitimacy to this event that it did not have before with just Tana Mojo's name on it. And on top of that, at the time, Shane was like not doing things in public. Like he wasn't going to VidCon. He wasn't going to other conventions. He wasn't doing meet and greets. The only way people could even really meet him was if they were lucky enough to be able to meet him on his book tour. But other than that, he was not just this type of YouTuber that was accessible to people. The idea of Shane Dawson being there and people actually getting to meet someone that for a while they deemed unattainable to meet, that was a huge, huge deal. So when he announced that he was going, this kind of changed the game and also upped the ante a lot for the event. Now, I think it's important to note here too that Tana Mojo, when she first talked about this event, she said it was going to be free. However, when the tickets dropped, there were free tickets technically. Uh, but there was also a ticket that you could pay $65 for that would allow you to be a featured fucking creator. This VIP pass basically meant that you were allowed to like skip super long lines, meant that you were allowed to get like first priority picks for your meet and greets. Like it just had all these, a goodie bag. <laughs> talk about the goodie bag, a goodie bag that was worth three times the price of the ticket. However, when the tickets dropped, the free tickets sold out basically instantly, like they were gone. And Tana at the time tweeted that that was like thousands of free tickets and that there were only the $65 tickets left. But we later learned that there was really only ever less than 200 free tickets for this event, meaning that the free tickets were essentially a scam. However, I will say, <laughs> Had TanaCon gone differently and all of this had gone off like without a hitch, I actually do feel like $65 is a very reasonable and competitive price to pay to like meet your favorite creators and like go to an event like that. VidCon charges like $200 for something like that. So if this event had gone seamlessly, I don't think anybody would have really been that angry at Tana for not actually holding up her end of the deal with the free tickets, which is low key what I think they were banking on. However, Tana was really focused on the free aspect of this. She was basically like, this is free. I always hated that I couldn't afford to go to these events. So I wanna make sure that all of you can afford to go to this event. And she also, was openly tweeting from her Twitter account like, hey, if you don't have an actual ticket, don't worry about it. Like, 
just show up. Everything is free. So she was really pushing and promoting the fact that this was just an event you could like roll through to without any prior access, without any registration, and just like attend. So then we get into TanaCon as an event. The night before TanaCon, there's been videos posted that show Tana incredibly intoxicated showing up to the hotel with like a group of her friends and just like dancing to Hefner in the ballroom and just like all of this stuff. And basically just like, not caring <laughs> in the slightest about anything. Any of the details, nothing. There was no like last minute checks to make sure the goodie bags were good. Like no, it was just Tana having a party with her friends. It also seemed like the good time staff just having a party. I remember watching, I was waiting for TanaCon from my home in Rochester, New York. Like I was not gonna go to this event, but I remember looking on the Good Times Twitter account and they had a picture of elevator doors that just had a sticker on it that said TanaCon. And they were like getting prepped for the big day tomorrow. And I remember being like, this is gonna be a fucking disaster. <laughs> If the only thing they can show us that they have done, like prep wise, is stick a sticker on an elevator door, this is going to be awful. Um, and it was. The next morning, on June 22nd, the event started. And right off the bat, it was already kind of a disaster. Um, the registration was supposed to start at 6 a.m. They sent out an email basically being like, hey, we're pushing registration starting back to 9 a.m. But of course, a bunch of people showed up at 6 a.m. So the people that showed up at 6 a.m. were essentially waiting in line for two and a half to three hours. Hours. And when the people who got the email actually showed up at around 9 a.m., 10 a.m., the line had already gotten disgustingly long. This line, I'm not kidding, I can't comprehend how long this line was. It was essentially like 4,000 people just serpentining through a very large parking lot at a Marriott hotel. And all of it was being funneled through like two security checkpoints. This was kind of the first red flag for a lot of people because 99% of the people going had bought this featured fucking creator pass, which was allegedly supposed to allow you to skip the line. And here they were waiting in this very, 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 very long line. People in line started sort of questioning this. And while some people believed right away that like the whole free ticket thing was a scam, other people were still trying to believe it. Outside the event, there were people just being burnt to an absolute crisp because nobody brought sunscreen because they thought it was going to be an indoor event. And also people like postmating pizzas and water to try and make sure that they could be fed and hydrated because at the time there was no food or water anywhere. The only food that was actually there was like some food truck in like the back of the building where like nobody could even see them. And in order to go get that food, you would have to leave this very, very, very long line. There was also a Starbucks, which I'm sure did numbers that day. Obviously, as people were waiting outside, the longer that things went on, the more agitated they got. Now, inside the event, I think that the way, especially it was first painted, was like the event was going seamlessly. It was flawless. It was going amazing. But the reality was the inside of the event was not great either. There was nothing to do. All the vlogs that I watch from TanaCon, like the day of, is literally just people like shuffling through hallways or a very old school dance vibes. Like it was either people in front of a stage, basically separated by all these barriers, or it was people just kind of like shuffling through hallways, aimlessly looking around, basically being like, what are we supposed to do? Seems like the only thing that was actually like there was merch tables, like that was it. Attendees who got inside the event in a reasonable amount of time were able to watch a panel and also were able to watch a wedding, which is nuts. <laughs> A girl and her husband, yeah, they got married at TanaCon legally. Lena the Plug actually married them. Emma Chamberlain was their flower girl. And Tana just stood off to the side in a preacher's outfit doing really nothing but hyping them up and then also hyping herself up for being so awesome that people wanted to get married at her convention. After the wedding, there was really no entertainment for about an hour until Big Nick took the stage and started doing some music and then also kind of off the cuff Gabby Hanna got up there and started performing. <laughs> I don't know. There were some meet and greets that were scheduled to be happening happening but a lot of people were having issues finding their verification emails for their meet and greets so it was basically just whoever got in was able to meet with whoever they wanted and there was no real rhyme or reason to what was happening. Now people who got in also were treated to the goodie bag which mind you was supposed to be three times 
the ticket price, according to Tana, and the goodie bag consisted of a little drawstring backpack, um, some bracelets, some stickers, and a TanaCon condom. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the TanaCon condom, it's kind of funny. I wouldn't use it. Like, I am in no way condoning people using that condom, but it is on brand for Tana. I actually think that was funny. Had it been paired with, like, actually good things in a goodie bag, I actually would have thought that was, like, a very funny little touch, but the fact that the TanaCon condoms were seemingly the most expensive expensive thing in the gift bag. Definitely a little off-putting. During this time too, it was reported that like tons of kids were having panic attacks because the, it was so crowded in the hotel and they had been standing outside in the sun and they hadn't been drinking water. And also one young girl who went ended up having to leave on a stretcher because she had such a bad panic attack that the paramedics had to come and like help her and get her out of that situation. So at around 11 a.m. things started going really badly. Um, security essentially started trying to push all of the people that were currently in the hotel in the ballroom and the other side rooms they started trying to push them out so they kind of ushered all of these people at that point it was probably about a thousand people into this hotel lobby and then we're not allowing them entrance back into the convention the, way the hotel was set up was like lobby here a uh, convention happening here and there was a side door where that's where the massive line was. So the security started pushing everybody towards the lobby and everybody was rightfully like, well, I just waited in the sun for five hours to get in here. Like I am not leaving. <laughs> I'm not gonna be not let into this convention. So instead of like exiting the premises, they all just kind of congregated in this giant hotel lobby. At that point, security who were trying to manage the crowd on the other end, like the very long line, kind of gave up and people just started walking into the event and trying to get in. And this obviously caused massive problems. The people in the lobby started harassing hotel employees that worked there and started like jumping up on the front desk and like writing things on the wall and were yelling and chanting and rightfully very angry. And this scared the people who worked at the hotel. So they actually locked themselves in their offices and called the police. There seems to be a period of time where there was just like no control over anything before the police and the fire marshals got there. So kids who had been waiting this long line, there was this big push to get in side, but they were just met with this other big crowd who was in the lobby trying to push back in this way. So it was essentially just like two very large, angry, sunburnt crowds clashing. The fire marshals came to try to break up the crowd. And this Montana tweeted something along the lines of, hey guys, nothing's wrong. <laughs> everything's fine. It's like the epitome of that um, meme where the dog is sitting in a room on fire and he's like, this is fine. That was Tana. Uh, she's like, everything's fine. Just fire marshal stuff. Keep being safe great Tanacon, um and then also tweeted that her and bella were going to be coming outside to like meet people and give out water i have to say if i were a fire marshal in a situation where i was trying to sort of disperse a crowd and trying to sort of lower the temperature of the crowd <laughs> physically and metaphorically like if I was trying to you know get everything under control an influencer known for causing mobs coming outside to cause another mob would really piss me off I don't know who advised Tana and Bella to go outside at that point in time or if that was just their decision to like go outside at that time but they're fucking ridiculous for doing that they got a great picture like a super cute picture that made Tana seem like a very loved person she later posted it for her birthday picture but this honestly just caused even more people to crowd around one singular person and like push towards the event and cause all of these issues. And eventually Tana and Bella ended up going inside. At the same time, in another part of the parking lot, the assistant to the CEO of Good Times had to go outside and essentially make this announcement that Tana Khan was being shut down because it was overcrowded. This caused a lot of pissed off people. <laughs> And also during this time, I would argue that like the most fucked up thing about TanaCon, like at its core, it was a lot of bad stuff that happened and a lot of problems, whatever. My biggest problem with TanaCon comes with this. And that is that security essentially started pushing out kids and being like, get out of here. You have to leave. Goodbye. Nobody wants you here. Leave. Goodbye. It's not even that the security guards were rude to these kids. Like, I don't think they should have been rude, but also there was like 25 of them and like 5,000 people. So I get why they were being a little harsh and a little strict. I think what bugs me about this is that because like 80% of the people at this event were children, they essentially had nowhere to go. Like their parents had dropped them off for the day. They had no cars, no means of transportation and we're essentially just like kicked to the curb and we're like hey figure it out like I just think that's so incredibly irresponsible there could have been so many 
horrific things that happened there. Like people who were pretending to be Ubers could have very easily taken advantage of that situation and kids could have gone missing. Kids could have been trying to like walk down a road and been hit. Like I don't even wanna think about the horrific possibilities that happens when you shove 4,000 children out into the world with nowhere to go and say, figure it out. But obviously a lot of bad things could have happened. They didn't, but I think it's messed up that anybody thought that was an acceptable thing to do. Instead of setting up a system and a safe way for a kids to safely leave the premises with people that they actually knew. And again, I don't even blame security or the fire marshal for that kind of mess happening. I fully blame Michael and Tana for putting those kids in a position where something absolutely horrible could have happened. And the other thing that frustrates me about this part is that they're very easily at this time because there's no security like checking bags or doing anything. Somebody very, very easily could have gone in there with a weapon and hurt a whole lot of people. It's honestly, when you look back at it, this has been said so many times, but it's true. It's a miracle that something did not happen at this event that was horrific because everything that was happening made it just so easy for somebody with bad intentions to do something horrible. So after people were kicked out, uh, Bella Thorne for some reason tweeted about how security sucks, which was rightfully roasted as a tweet because that's just like a stupid take. Like it's not the security's fault that you overbooked the event anyway. And this is when the lies of Tana Khan started. So Tana did an Instagram live stream. First of all, she started off off by thanking her fans for coming and supporting her, which is kind of a weird take when you just canceled your convention. It's like a weird way to spin this. It's like, oh my God, I just have so much support. People just love me so much. Like that was a weird way to put it. And this is when she started claiming that 20,000 people had showed up at the event. It's really, really interesting watching this live stream back, especially with kind of the information we all have now, because it's basically all a gigantic lie. And I guess the bigger question here is not like, is it a lie? Because it's all a lie. Everything she says is completely non-factual. But when we're talking about Tana's involvement in all of this going forward, it's basically all did she know or did she not know? So Tana claimed that 15,000 unticketed guests showed up to this convention, showed up to this event, and that is why they had to shut down. She said the venue for the event held 5,000 people and that 5,000 people were safely inside having an awesome time. And that because these 15,000 other people showed up who didn't have tickets, that's why it caused this problem. Tana said that the out of the 5,000 tickets, the majority were free. Majority? <laughs> she said majority. <laughs> Majority were free. And she also did this very like, I don't know, I guess maybe I'm too cynical, but I find it to be pretty manipulative. She did this whole thing about how everyone she talked to said they were having so much fun and that they loved it and that they were having a great time and that she put on a great event and basically blamed this 15,000 people problem on the sort of growing pains of hosting a new event. She also talked about their plan, which was going to be to try to find a second event to host day two of TanaCon the next day. Now, this account is actually cooperated by Michael's documentary on the whole thing, where he basically showed him him segueing around um, Anaheim trying to find a secondary location. Seems like they actually did find a second location for day two, but then the second location fell through for whatever reason. Michael claims it's because the event tried to extort him once they found out the position he was in. Personally, I think it's that they just didn't have the money to book a second venue. So as I said, Michael was actively searching for this other location to try to host TanaCon day two in. Um, it said that Tana actually went to her network's birthday party for her because it was her birthday during all of this and she basically said that she just like went there not to party but just to figure out what happened. I'm pretty sure she just went there to party but like whatever. This is especially shady because during this time Tana was tweeting that she was like in security meetings at like four in the morning but there's no evidence that she actually did that. It seems like that was again just another lie in this whole thing. Now the next morning Good Times released their statement saying that TanaCon day two was officially canceled that they could not find anything and they also were still sticking with this whole 20,000 people showed up thing and also Michael Weiss did this sort of like mini press conference where he was basically like I'm gonna take three questions <laughs> and one of the questions was like how do we get our money back and he did not have an answer for that question which was definitely a red flag and now later that day also finally put out a statement she had been radio silent up till this point basically explaining how embarrassed and sorry she was and also very importantly saying that not only would there be refunds for everybody who attended the event, like tickets would be refunded, even if she had to pay for it herself. But on top of that, every single person who traveled for the event, all of their travel expenses would be paid 
all you had to do was like send an email and Tana would be covering that. I just want to say this. I, I actually like don't think that Tana paying for all of the flight, like that's kind of ridiculous to pay for everybody's flights, to pay for everybody's trains, buses, car, gas, like expenses, hotel rooms, like that's a little outrageous. Like there was no way that was ever going to happen. However, the fact that she tweeted that that was what was going to happen and the fact that she said that's what was going to happen is kind of the problem. Like had she just been like, yeah, the tickets will be refunded and stopped it there, that would have been reasonable. But when she starts making all of these unreasonable solutions, Solutions. She really was just setting herself up and also everyone up who was involved for failure. Now, during this time, Shane Dawson, who, like I said, was kind of a pivotal character in getting all of these people to come in the first place, tweeted about how he wanted to make sort of a docu-series about TanaCon, and that's actually what he did. He got this up really quickly. It was like within the week of TanaCon happening, Shane was dropping the parts of his series. Now, in this series, Shane talked to some fans who had actually gone to TanaCon. He talked to Michael Weist via FaceTime, and also in the final part, he talked to Tana herself. I'm not going to go into everything about this series because there's definitely a lot of like little details that didn't really matter, but I, w I just have to say like in hindsight he really was incredibly biased towards Tana. <laughs> like he was shading Michael. You can even tell in little clips that he did leave in where he was talking about Michael to Tana. There's a lot of contempt in his voice for Michael and just like not liking him or trusting him. And you can also tell that the documentary was really painted to make Tana look like kind of the victim. Like he did kind of hold her accountable a little bit by just saying like, yeah, you were really spiteful. All he really did in this series was give her her narrative. Tana was not talking about how TanaCon had started from a place of spite before Shane said it. Then once Shane said it, and that was a narrative that a lot of people agreed with, she is that that was her whole thing. She's like, I was spiteful. <laughs> Sorry guys, I was really spiteful. He kind of laid down the blueprint for how she was going to come out of this successful. One of the big things that were really exposed by this series was basically that the fire marshals released a statement that said that there was only four to 5,000 people there. So the whole 20,000 people theory went out the window. Tana and my Michael knew that the capacity of the hotel was at about a thousand people and also knew that they were overselling the event by selling 5,000 tickets. They also exposed that there were in fact no free tickets, which like surprised nobody, and that basically all of the tickets had been these $65 tickets. There was also some footage in there from like Michael's whole documentary that he did where Tana was basically like, I want people to be waiting outside. People love to be oppressed in the rain. And like, Okay. Now a month later, Tana put out her side of the story and all of this. And honestly, it was just regurgitated what Shane had already talked about. I mean, she spent the first like 11 minutes of the video essentially claiming Michael was like a predator and a horrible person and a scam artist. And then being like, but I'm not going to talk about that in this video. <laughs> So she like said all of it and then was like, but we're not here to discuss that today. So really right off the bat, she was basically like, this is a hit piece on Michael Weiss. And honestly, I don't know if any of that stuff is true, what she said about him. But like, even if it was, I don't think it was pertinent to the information about like what happened with TanaCon. But regardless, Tana basically took zero accountability in this video for anything. And honestly, she, she, she should have taken more accountability. I'm not saying honestly because of that. But if you think about it, like she really was just the talent behind TanaCon, like the people who were supposed to be running the event and making sure that it operated smoothly was Michael Weist and Good Times and that whole team. Like was Tana's name on it? Yes. So she obviously should have taken a little bit more precaution in what she was doing, taken a little bit more time to really think about what she was signing on for. But at the end of the day, a lot of the sort of logistical stuff did fall to Michael. And I don't think it's fair that she would get the blame for that. Where I really blame Tana is honestly just all of the fucking lying. Like if you really look at this situation and how much she just lied her way through, not even just like the 20,000 people thing or anything like that, even just about the amount of tickets being sold, the amount of capacity, like she knew that that event was over sold. There's video evidence where they tell her the, the capacity is a thousand. I'm setting the ticket limit at 5,200. She knew that this was going to be sort of a disaster and she promoted it, put her name on it, and allowed her fans to attend it and put them in a really unsafe situation just because. And also just lied about little things. Like she lied about the fact that she was investing money into the convention because she didn't. She lied about the gift bags. She lied about there being things to do because the reality was inside the actual event, 
there was absolutely nothing to do. Now flash forwarding a few months, in October of that year, Tana basically made a tweet where she was dressed up as Michael Weiss for Halloween and it made a short clip of a video where she was like, I'm gonna lose my house over this. Michael responded to this being like, I have my side of the story, it's gonna be coming out. And that's how he put out the TanaCon, what really happened documentary. Honestly, it was really, don't watch it. It's, <laughs> I don't know if you can watch it anymore. I'm pretty sure you can get it on Amazon video still, but it's so bad. It's so poorly edited, stupidly poorly edited. Like I can't even put no words. It's literally just like a bunch of clips all put together in chronological order. Like it's, it's with no commentary or anything like that. And really all of this showed was that like Tana really didn't take the whole planning process seriously. Like they were supposed to do some meetings and she just slept through the meeting. It showed that Michael really was the one trying to find a venue after everything fell apart. Um, but that was, wasn't really any new information coming from that, except for the fact that like, Tana didn't really do much, which is like what we already knew. Now, since Michael's documentary dropped in 2018, both Tana and Michael have remained fairly silent about this until recently. Tana has started to make like tweets and TikToks and jokes about TanaCon again. And honestly, like I get that maybe like that's how you move on from a situation like this, but I just will never think that TanaCon is funny like at all. Like I will never think that all of those kids being put in real danger is funny. I will never, I will never find that to be a joke. And even when she has posted TikToks, like trying to make a joke about everything, most people in the comments are like, hey, I still have a sunburn from TanaCon or like, hey, I still haven't got my refund. Nobody's travel expenses were paid, like nothing of the sort happened. So I think that's the other reason it's still kind of a touchy subject, for, especially for people who went, because like they essentially just wasted their money and like nothing happened except that they went to this absolute train wreck of an event. The only other time Tana has really talked about this is when in 2019 she announced that she was going to be attending VidCon as a featured creator, which is like, and basically she talked about how a bunch of other companies had come to her trying to run like a TanaCon 2 and trying to redo it. And honestly, I think that's an absolutely horrific idea. I get that it would be like be better than the first one and I'm sure that it would be whatever, but I think the idea of Tana doing a new event again after not even fully addressing the first one and also not even refunding everybody for the first one is just like a really shitty thing to do. Now, Michael, on the other hand, has stayed radio silent about most of this, except for when he very recently went on the Dr. Phil show. Now, this Dr. Phil episode was honestly wild. My favorite people, Amanda, over at Spell Entertainment, who has some fantastic videos on TanaCon that I will link down below. She went to the event and her vlogs on it are so interesting to watch. She's also done multiple videos like covering everything. She was actually on this Dr. Phil episode, kind of tried to interrogate Michael and it was iconic, like she is an icon. Um, but on Dr. Phil, they spent the first part talking about TanaCon and then the second part talking about like him as a person. I'm not gonna get into the him as a person stuff, but in regards to TanaCon, Michael is still basically unwilling to accept any accountability for the role that he played in TanaCon. He's still lying about 20,000 people showing up to the event when like they didn't. He's still lying about how many free tickets were sold when we all know how many were sold. I think he was really hoping that the audience of Dr. Phil wouldn't correlate with like the YouTube audience that like knows the facts of what happened. And so I think that's why he went on there and just lied. But he essentially took no accountability. Seems like he hasn't really changed too much as a person. He did go bankrupt from this whole thing. He did have to file for bankruptcy because of TanaCon. However, I'm sorry, I don't care. I don't really feel bad for him. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like they both really set themselves up for all of this to happen. So it's hard to feel bad for somebody who had to declare bankruptcy because of all of this happening. Who also, for some reason, despite declaring bankruptcy, is still wearing like all Gucci and Chanel. I just don't feel as bad for him, I'm sorry. The only other thing that this Dr. Phil episode exposed, and this is because of Amanda from Swole Entertainment, was that Michael was trying to do a TanaCon 2. He's basically trying to do a TanaCon 2 without Tana. <laughs> I guess he trademarked the name TanaCon 2 a while back and also sold merch for this event that hasn't happened yet. And uh, Amanda, who I'll get, I'll link her video down below about this, but she a suspicion that Michael is basically went on the Dr. Phil show to number one try to drum up hype for a second TanaCon to clear his name from the first one and also to sort of try to disassociate Tana from the event entirely. He really did paint it like he did all of the work and it was all him and she was sort of just this figurehead. Like he said he had been planning the event for months before he reached out to Tana which based on the timeline is not actually what happened. But yeah we might actually get like two TanaCon twos because if Tana actually does one with another company and Michael does one by himself 
curious to know what's gonna happen there. Now just to kind of end all of this I have to say I think the only reason Tana's career didn't just absolutely go up in flames was two things. Number one I think the Shane Dawson docuseries really helped her. I think it painted her in a very empathetic light and I think it did shove a lot of the blame onto Michael even though she did deserve at least a portion of it. And I also think again I hate to keep harping on this but this is like the biggest thing for me. I think a big reason she didn't end up losing anything really over this was mostly because nobody actually got hurt. Like I really cannot stress enough how dangerous this event could have been and how horrific everything could have gone had the wrong person taken this opportunity. I think the fact that it was really just people losing money, sunburns, and panic attacks, nobody saw that as real hurt cause to people, even though it absolutely was for the people that went. But I think that's why Tana didn't really ever get any real heat for this and also why she feels so emboldened to still like make a lot of jokes about it because I think to her this is just sort of another like bump in the road of her very scandalous career up until this point. Honestly the kind of sad thing about this whole thing is that the idea of other youtubers hosting smaller more niche conventions is actually a genius idea. Like the idea of having something where you actually have a small number of people and it actually is feasible to meet creators in a safe way is a great idea. Like it honestly in theory sounds fantastic to be able to do that to actually go and reasonably meet people but because this was done so poorly and was such a disaster I don't necessarily see a lot of youtubers stepping up to the plate to put their name on something like this again the fact that it was so bad and honestly went down in like internet history <laughs> for being so bad really the fire fest and the dash con for youtubers like it was really a wild thing and I'm honestly really interested to see if there's any sort of other events like this hosted. If Tana does this again, I hope she does not. But if Tana does or any other YouTuber does, I'm really interested to see the way that YouTuber conventions are going to evolve past this very horrific experience that happened. Anyway, <laughs> that's it for me. If you guys enjoyed this video please let me know down below i'd love to do more of these like internet history things i actually had so much fun researching this one and like looking into it like i said i love nostalgic stupid things that don't matter really so that's what this was um if you like this video please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither honestly just so happy you're watching me thank you so much for being here my merch my social media and everything i am wearing on my face along with my vlog channel and my podcast channel will be linked down below along with some links and information about pride month super important to go check those out stay informed stay involved i love you guys so much and i will see you in the next one bye